When we talk about the incredible success story of Berkshire Hathaway, the first name that jumps to mind is undoubtedly the legendary Warren Buffett. After all, Buffett built Berkshire from a struggling textile mill into one of the largest companies in the world and became one of the wealthiest men alive along the way. However, Behind this multi-billionaire investing genius stood an equally brilliant but less heralded co-founder, Charlie Munger. Munger was Buffett's friend, business partner, and right-hand man for over 60 years. Yet few know the critical role Munger played in shepherding Berkshire's rise. What transpired over lunch at an Omaha country club in 1959 between Munger and the young Warren Buffett became the stuff of business lore. Their friendship marked the genesis of a legendary partnership between two razor-sharp minds. Without Charlie Munger's wisdom, inspiration, and behind-the-scenes contributions, we likely never would have heard of Berkshire Hathaway today. So how did this son of a Midwestern lawyer develop the mental models to evaluate investments no one else could crack? Why did Munger succeed later in life after early setbacks? What was the key to his epic 60-year relationship with Buffett? The answers lie in understanding this overlooked genius billionaire who was the indispensable secret weapon in Berkshire Hathaway's ascent to corporate royalty. Charlie Munger was born in Omaha, Nebraska on New Year's Day, 1924. He grew up as an only child in a respectable middle-class family. His father, Alfred, was a prominent attorney in town while his grandfather had served for years as a district judge. Perhaps this background helped spur Charlie's intelligence from a young age. As a teenager, one of his first jobs was at a grocery store called Buffett & Son, owned by Warren Buffett's grandfather. Friends describe him as studious and ambitious even as a teenager. In 1941, he left Omaha and enrolled at the University of Michigan. However, like millions of other young American men, Charlie's education was suddenly disrupted in 1943 due to World War II. He emerged from the war as a decorated officer having achieved the rank of second lieutenant, but the images of combat never fully left him. Later in life, Charlie admits his worst fear was being plunged back into the total darkness and sense of helplessness he witnessed on the battlefield. After the hostilities ceased, Charlie returned home like so many other veterans ready to reboot his dreams. His next move was quite unexpected. Despite not finishing his bachelor's degree, Charlie set his sights on attending the most prestigious law school in the country, Harvard. On paper, he shouldn't have had a chance given he had not completed an undergraduate degree. But Charlie had an ace up his sleeve through a family connection. Turns out a Munger family friend just happened to be the former dean of Harvard Law. His name was Roscoe Pound. At Charlie's request, Pound placed a call to the current admissions dean. And just like that, Munger was enrolled at Harvard without an undergraduate diploma to his name. Armed with a law degree from Harvard, Charlie Munger seemed destined for great success. He moved to California and joined a blue-chip firm while also dabbling in real estate investments on the side. Little did he know his world was about to be turned upside down after a dinner party in 1959 where he met Warren Buffett again. Buffett told CNBC, about five minutes into it, Charlie was sort of rolling on the floor laughing at his own jokes, which is exactly the same thing I did. I thought, I'm not going to find another guy like this. And we just hit it off. Neither man could have imagined their friendly conversation over dinner would blossom into the most legendary business partnership of the history. The two began talking about investments and never stopped. And on Buffett's advice, Munger gave up law. Eager to chase his investing dreams, Charlie decided to form a partnership with a fellow investor named Jack Wheeler. Together, they launched Wheeler, Munger & Company, an investment firm operating right on the Pacific Stock Exchange. This represented his first major foray into money management. However, the investment waters proved treacherous for Charlie over the next few years. The 1970s delivered massive upheaval throughout society and the American economy. Like so many other businesses, Wheeler, Munger & Co. was battered relentlessly as financial markets plunged over 30% from 1973 to 1976. The firm suffered deep losses over this stretch, and Charlie was eventually forced to shut down operations. Every great success story seems filled with early setbacks and adversity. 
At this stage, you wouldn't have picked Charlie as destined for billionaire status one day. But he remained convinced in his mind that prudent long-term investing would pay off even if the short-term brought painful losses. Buffett had slowly been buying up shares of a struggling New England textile producer named Berkshire Hathaway throughout the early 1960s. He saw a hidden value in the assets and operations other sharper Wall Street minds were missing or ignoring. But Buffett sorely needed a wise confidant to bounce ideas off, someone steeped in finance who understood balance sheets as well as human psychology. Over that dinner, it became apparent he found his kindred spirit in Charlie Munger. As soon as Buffett became the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway in 1965, he convinced Munger to join him as VC. Charlie's multidisciplinary mental model approach perfectly complemented Buffett's own obsession with poring over financial statements and annual reports. It was the ideal left-brain, right-brain partnership, which could break down complex businesses better than nearly anyone on Wall Street. Of course, the real fruits of this friendship would take time to ripen and bloom. Their 60-year partnership steered Berkshire from a struggling textile mill into one of most admired companies globally, currently valued at over $500 billion. An important facet of understanding is that Charlie Munger's investment strategy and thinking didn't follow any standard playbook. He was very much an independent thinker and he was quite critical of investors who followed crowd psychology, which often led to irrational decision-making as various manias and bubbles developed. Instead, Charlie had developed a unique perspective on business and investing, which employed what he termed multi-mental models. He had studied disciplines like psychology, engineering, economics, and the natural sciences. By integrating insights from those fields, Charlie felt he could analyze problems and get to the truth of issues in an interdisciplinary fashion. His ability to link concepts across subjects helped him drill down to the essence of a business or investment in a way most Wall Street analysts simply couldn't match. As you can probably tell by now, Charlie Munger called things as he saw them. He had no time for nonsense or stupidity when it came to business practices or investments. This led to some colorful lambasts over the years, directed at everyone from Wall Street bankers to cryptocurrency enthusiasts. When asked for his views on Bitcoin, Charlie didn't mince words and called the entire crypto market noxious poison he wanted no part of. He compared Bitcoin to trading in turds. Berkshire Hathaway has avoided technology names for the most part, so there was zero chance it was ever going to own digital coins no matter how popular they became. And in the aftermath of the great financial crisis of 2008, Charlie gave blistering criticism of the reckless behavior by the major investment banks. He blamed the system, which allowed banks to dump risky mortgage bonds onto investors rather than hold their own creations. According to Charlie, large parts of Wall Street lacked ethics and morals. The crisis served to harden his Darwinian perspective on business. Those who made poor decisions should be forced to live with the consequences of their own making with no taxpayer bailouts. Tough, but not totally unfair logic. While Charlie could be blunt and didn't pull punches, he was also extremely generous on the philanthropy side. Over his lifetime, Charlie donated hundreds of millions to various universities and institutions because he was a big believer in the power of education. And that, in a nutshell, is the story of Charlie Munger. He passed away on November 28, 2023, at the age of 99. From World War II hero to blue-chip lawyer to investing legend and billionaire philanthropist, Charlie certainly maximized his time on this earth. As Charlie Munger's incredible 99-year journey shows, true business greatness springs from a commitment to continuous learning and from fearlessly thinking differently than the herd. While Munger has unfortunately passed, his unconventional methods and mental models approach will live on. Now we want to hear from you. What was your biggest takeaway on Munger's life or his impact alongside Buffett at Berkshire Hathaway? Share all your feedback in the comments below. If these tales of the financial world intrigue you, be sure to check our video on the mysterious Wall Street wizardry behind the $10 trillion asset giant BlackRock. Thank you for being part of our community 
And until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep making history.